Would you give a brief or a thumbnail, thumbnail, uh, on why Calvary Bible is a rapture-believing church versus uh, the uh, pre-wrath view? Um, why that? And they said, would you give a thumbnail? Actually, it was a four-page question. And uh, they asked me to give a thumbnail. So I thought, okay, that's, I love challenges. And uh, I always think in terms of references. So I'll just give you the references that come to my mind. Uh, John 14, uh, 1 Thessalonians, of course, 4 and 5, uh, and 2 Thessalonians 1, and then uh, Acts 1. So let's just go through those uh, for the rapture. Uh, I, I mean, Personally, I don't know if you know the, the pre-wrath rapture view is actually just a, uh, a restatement of, of a historic position. It was called the mid-tribulational view. It's also been called um, other things over the years. But let's start in John 14. And basically, for some of you who, uh, I have to always remember that there are some people that don't know Christian speak. You know, I mean, you haven't grown up. Uh, in the church, so you don't know what we're talking about. And rapture is a word that's not in the Bible. Uh, actually, the word that's in the Bible is a Greek word, uh, harpazo. Um, harpazo, yeah. Uh, that's not what it looks like. That's just a, um, you know, a, a anglicized version of it. This word is the word that's used when Philip was sent by the Lord to intersect the Ethiopian eunuch, if you remember that in Acts chapter 8. And uh, the eunuch, Philip was walking, and the eunuch comes driving along from Jerusalem in his chariot, going back to Ethiopia. And as he's going along, he had purchased the big scroll of Isaiah, which means the guy was loaded. Uh, anybody could buy that thing, which took, you know, a long time to copy. And he was up in his chariot, and he was reading it. And in the ancient world, I don't know if you realize, people didn't read silently. Books, manuscripts, uh, scrolls were so rare that, that people read aloud or had reading read to them so that others could hear. And so he, the reason Philip knew where he was reading was he came up and listened because reading was allowed. Because reading is, it, literally the, the Greek word for reading is to know again what the person knew that wrote this. And so reading wasn't, you know, I mean, we see words everywhere. I mean, there's flashing signs and the billboards change and, and we're just inundated in messages and everything else. And so to us, reading is, is almost a labor because there's too many things to read. It was so precious back then that their goal was to know again what the person knew when uh, they wrote it. And that's why the Ethiopian eunuch says, uh, understand us thou, or Philip said, understand us thou, do you know what he was writing? And so after he finished leading him to the Lord and baptizing him, it says he was caught away. Philip was, by the Holy Spirit. He was in the city of Gaza, which is, of course, you know where that is because of the news. It's down uh, along the coast on the way to Egypt, and he was found in Azotus. That means that, that God literally took him from one place and put him in another place. That word is this word, and that's the word that Paul said that we will be taken in, from where we are into the Lord's presence. So let's look at how that happens and why... Uh, Calvary Bible and myself believe in uh, the biblical rapture um, in chapter 14. Now, most people talk about this. In fact, I, I was in, uh, if you've ever heard of uh, Marv Rosenthal or if you've ever heard of uh, uh, Van Camp and Merritt, the company that owns Xerox, uh, I remember sitting in the 80s uh, while I was on uh, faculty at the Master's Seminary and uh, Bob Van Campen, who owns Xerox Corporation, wrote a two-year Bible study uh, about the, the pre-wrath rapture view and gave it to Marv Rosenthal, who later published it in his own name, if you've ever read his works. It was actually Bob Van Campen that, that wrote it. But I remember sitting and listening by the hour 
with all the faculty of the Master's Seminary, and they got into uh, such complexities that most people uh, would have just, I mean, started checking their email because it was so hard to explain the positions. And so I, I like to think simply. And so I'll look at John 14. Jesus is saying in verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. That's a sad translation. That's New King James. Actually, it doesn't mean, you know, like Dolly Parton mansions, you know, down there in Nashville. We're not talking about that. Uh, not Texan oil mansions. It's one house and many rooms. So we're living in our Father's house in our room under his roof. And so in my Father's house are many, and that word mansions uh, actually is used outside of this passage for nests. Birds have nests. You know, um, if, if you have a chicken coop, you know, the chicken has its own little place it sits, you know. It's, it's spot. That's what this word is. So we each have a spot in our Father's house. If it were not so, I would have told you. Now here, here it is. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Um, what he's talking about here, it's very interesting. The rapture, as is discussed uh, here at Calvary and in literature, popular literature, is Jesus, <clears throat> excuse me, coming for believers. And I like to say, now Zig, watch out, I'm going to cough. <coughs> by my cough here. Um, I believe that, that uh, Bonnie always tells me, honey, that's confusing, don't say that. Honey, that's confusing, don't say that. I, I heard you say that. I believe that there are two, two raptures. One is the most commonly repeated one where Jesus comes to where one of his saints are at the instant of their death. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou, capital T, you, God, are with me. If you couple that, Psalm 23, 4, with what it says in Hebrews chapter 9, it's appointed unto us once to die. God does not send angels... God actually sends his son, our Savior, to come and take us home because of this promise. I go and prepare a place for you. And Jesus coming for believers is a very personal, uh, in fact, uh, I personally have uh, performed over 300 funerals. I stopped counting, kind of like that book, My First 300 Babies. I did my first 300 funerals, and I've stopped counting since then. But I always tell the families this. I say, as w when I'm sitting with them, I say, what time did, uh, did grandma die? What time did your dad die? What time did your wife stop breathing and, and you knew that, that she had died? And they look at the clock and they say, oh, you know, 227. I said, you know what? I know exactly where in the whole universe Jesus Christ was at 227. He came because he had prepared a place. And I will come. Look what it says. I will come. I'm in, in um, verse 3. I go, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. The, the rapture, number one, is the personal one. The First Thessalonians 4 one is a group. That's where Jesus takes all of us who are alive and remain to be gathered unto him. Same word right here. Uh, this, this, oh, I left the R out. There we go. No one told me that. I thought it didn't look right. Harpazo. It's like harpazo. Harpazo. This snatching out is being taken from one spot to somewhere else. Here in John 14, the context is 
I'm preparing a place for you, verse 2. Since I'm going to prepare a place for you, when the place is done, I'm going to receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. I remember Willard Heck was his name, founder of New Life Ranch and Tulsa Bible Church. He used to always sit by the column that held up the balcony in that original building we used to be in. And he got so old and weak that he ended up leaning on the column. He couldn't even sit up straight. He was not strong enough, but he never missed church. And he would always be seen leaned from toppling over on that column. And I remember talking to him as he finally couldn't even come to church and he was in the hospital his last days until he died of uh, uh, emphysema or something along that line. And, and tears ran down his face and he said, my whole life, I have waited for the rapture. My whole life, I thought I was going to get to go in the rapture. And he just, I mean, my heart went out to him. It was so sweet, pastor to pastor, and he just wept. I said, Willard, you are going in the rapture. You get the personal one, the private rapture. Everybody else has to wait for the bus. You are going <laughs> escorted, personally taken, by the Lord Jesus Christ who's coming because your place is prepared. And I want you to know, if you get to choose between, I mean, which one do you think is better? Would you rather get on a bus or would you rather have a private, escorted walk through the valley of the shadow of death? And it was so sweet. He said, oh, you're just, you know, he said, you're just doing that. I said, no, that's what I believe. So rapture, this is what Bonnie says. I'm not saying that there are going to be two raptures because that's a whole different view. That's called Christian triumphalism and they believe that the people that go in the first rapture are only the ones that are really living for the Lord and the rest need to kind of go through purgatory of the tribulation for a while and if they get it together, they get to go in the second coming of Christ. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about at death, Jesus Christ comes to personally take believers to be with him because he's prepared a place for them. And that means that if you wonder why you, you, we have many senior citizens that get to a point where they're so weak, so limited, so in pain, they say, why does the Lord let me stay? And I always tell them the same thing. Write what it says. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come and receive you to myself. You know what's implied? When your place is ready. And so if we are struggling with uh, uh, physical infirmities and the Lord has not come or come to take us home, then it's because like Anna in the account of Christ's birth, we need to serve him by prayer and by fasting. And those are the two things uh, that the older you get, you can do. Fasting because you don't have any appetite and you're not hungry and nothing agrees with you, and prayer because you can't sleep anyway. And so you just pray and fast and pray and fast and, and glorify God that way. But let's talk about the group event. Uh, John 14 talks about uh, the, the coming of Christ. 1 Thessalonians 4, you already know this, but let's just look at it. I mean, the wording of what, what we're talking about, the rapture, which is Christ receiving his church unto himself. Uh, these are the words, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 onward. I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as those who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep, Verse 16, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be, and that word caught up is that word harpazo right there, caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus shall we always be with the Lord, therefore comfort one another, and keep reading down through chapter 5 to verse 9, the 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 second reference there, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 9 right here uh, says the second pillar, as it were, of the, uh, 
rapture is God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, whether we live or die, we should live together with him, comfort one another. You notice again, the, the idea of Christ's coming was comfort, not you're going to have to endure all the horrors of the Antichrist, and if you survive after you've endured that, then uh, I'm going to come get you. And then look at the second coming of Christ, the description. It's in across the page in 2 Thessalonians 1 and uh, verse 8, just across the page. This, this is the second coming. Now see, what we have to do uh, is contrast, and, and the, the rapture, if you notice, uh, is uh, Jesus uh, coming... He's in the clouds. Uh, we're caught up into the air. Uh, and uh, into the air. Caught up to be with him. And that's the rapture. That's the, the uh, John 14 and 1 Thessalonians 4 and 5 comfort. So it's a comforting thing. Now, the second coming, look at 2 Thessalonians 1.8, the second coming. What, what is that? Well, it's in flaming fire. See what it says? Um, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and it talks about the, the coming of Christ uh, which is hearkening onto Revelation 19 when at his second coming, that is the second coming, Revelation 19. talks about the second coming. Uh, it's the same one that Matthew 24 talks about and Matthew 26 talks about, which talks about him coming on the clouds and everybody mourning and, and people crawling underneath, you know, trying to hide from him coming and the fiery vengeance and all that. So the second coming, he touches down. If you, if you actually read uh, Zechariah, he touches down. Zechariah 12 and 14 tells us where he lands on the Mount of Olives. And when he lands... There's this massive earthquake that splits the mountain and, and it causes global topographical, uh, geological, and geographic changes. And he consumes all the armies and that fire and everything else and immediately sets up this dividing of the sheep and goats and, and, and we know all that. So there is quite a difference between this and this. Now, back. You all, this is only review. Look at this. See, this is what's so neat. I don't need to go into the tenses of some Greek word and try and compare Daniel to this and that. Look what Acts 1 says. This, when people talk about the hope, the blessed hope, in, in Titus, Paul continues this idea and in Titus 2, he says, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. What is that? That's in Acts chapter 1. Um, it says, um, verse 9, now when he had spoken these things, Acts 1, 9, they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Now, we've already talked about that. I mean, that, that was in our Titus 2 when we looked at that. And, and talked about how Jesus left the earth. Luke 24 tells us he was blessing the disciples verbally. He's saying, Peter, Peter, you're amazing. Keep on, don't forget what I taught you. Keep your foot out of your mouth, Peter. You know, don't, and Thomas, hold on, don't doubt anymore. Uh, John, you know. And he was just blessing them and, and just giving his blessings to each of the, the apostles that were there. And as he was blessing, raining down blessings on them, it said he began to rise. See what it says? And while, 
when he had spoken these things, in, in, in Luke 24, says while he was speaking these things, actually he's still talking, and he starts rising up, and, and they're looking up at him, watching him rise from the Mount of Olives. And he was taken up out of their sight until a cloud, you know, kind of disappeared in the clouds and went away. And while they just kept watching, you know, hoping he'd come right back because they loved it best when he was there, behold, two men stood by them in verse 10 in white apparel, which also said, uh, Vir Galil. That's what the Latin says. There's a church called that. They actually have built a church on this spot, Vir Galil. Uh, men of Galilee. Uh, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? Now this is what I wanted to get to, verse 11. This same Jesus who was taken up from you. Here's, here's the rapture. You don't need to try and squeeze what Paul said into what Jesus said in Matthew 24. This is the, the final word. Jesus just went up blessing them, raining down blessings only seen by believers. Did you think about that? After the resurrection, Jesus was never seen except by loving eyes. He was never touched except by loving hands. Jesus only spent time with believers after his resurrection. He didn't go around and show off to the Roman soldiers that they didn't do a good job crucifying him, you know, he, that he was alive. He only was seen by believing eyes and touched by believing hands. But look what it says, verse 11. This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner. So the angels explain the second the, the, the return of Christ, the second coming of Christ for believers. And the more you study this, there are two, two, dis, two completely differently described second comings. The like manner for believers, the angels said in verse 11, believers, the second coming of Christ is going to be just like his ascension. What was it like? It was only for believers. It was a blessing. It was uh, uh, Jesus coming in a way that comforted them. That, that Remember, he says, you know, don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't worry about this. He blessed them on his way. Just the way you saw him go into heaven you're going to see him return the same way. That's why it began to be known as, in Titus, back up here, in Titus 2, right there, it began to be known as the blessed hope of the believers. What is the blessed hope? Not that we're going to endure the, the greatest outpouring of deception, and of, of Satan on overdrive and having the false Christ uh, that, that is coming as you read about in Revelation, but that the one who went to prepare a place for us is going to come and receive us and bring with him all the saints whose bodies are going to come out of the ground and be... Uh, they are going to be, their bodies resurrected and our bodies changed in that instant. So they and us will get, 1 Corinthians 15 says, our bodies at the same time. So, one last thing, because this is only supposed to be a thumbnail. Um, need uh, to work on that description. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, because um, now you see why it was a four-page email, because uh, there's a lot of details, but... Uh, Paul said this in 1 Thessalonians uh, 15. What I didn't mark this. Uh, Behold, I show you mystery, we shall not all sleep. What verse is that? Say it again. 51. There we go. Thank you. Who said that? 
good job. Elizabeth, right? I thought I could see you through the lights. 51, behold, I show you a mystery. I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we all shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of the eye. At the last trumpet, the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And on and on he goes. This, so, so this is the first time that this event is mentioned. A mystery means it was heretofore not previously revealed. So this doctrine is classified in the Bible as a mystery. In other words, you can't find it in the Old Testament. And you also can't find it in the Gospels. And the question that, that Dave Scott asked, you know, a couple weeks ago, what about Peter saying, you know, and Jesus telling him that, that he's going to be crucified upside down, you know, they're going to stretch out your arms and carry you where you don't want to go, and they're going to do what you don't want them to do to you, which was predicting his death then how could Peter have believed in the any moment return of Christ? Because when Jesus talked in John 14, they didn't understand what he was talking about. They just heard it. They, they weren't processing all this stuff. Jesus was telling them truth that would not be understood until Paul, in 1 Corinthians 15, says, let me clarify this. This is something that wasn't pre... Jesus did not comment... Now, you can look back, and you can see the rapture all the way through the Old Testament. I mean, it's, it's so, so interesting. Uh, at the flood, there was someone uh, that was taken out prior to the flood. There was someone that was preserved through the flood. And there was everyone that was destroyed by the flood. Enoch represents the church. Noah represents Israel that are kept through the tribulation, and the world is the world. I mean, the same is true of, of Lot being dragged out of Sodom and, and Sodom being destroyed, but before the destruction, Lot was pulled out. I mean, you can see all these things that, that you can read into them, but uh, personally... The reason I believe in the rapture is because Jesus said that he's going to prepare a place and come and get us. He, Paul describes it as a mystery, and Jesus said what believers look forward to is the personal coming of Jesus Christ to receive us unto himself. So that's my thumbnail.